California will have the nation's first hydrogen hub, a network that produces hydrogen for various needs, including powering electric vehicles and generating on-demand electricity. Signed under a $12.6 billion agreement, this hub will facilitate renewable hydrogen production that is expected to cut fossil fuel use throughout the state by almost 2 million metric tons. Not only that, over 220,000 jobs are expected to be generated and $2.95 billion in annual revenue per the governor's office. This, folks, is a huge deal, especially in the midst of a modest recovery in hydrogen innovation as well as demand for fuel cell electric trucks like from Nikola. That's right, folks. Despite decade-high interest rates and significantly high inflation, resulting in relatively expensive hydrogen gas production, Nikola's hydrogen fuel cell deliveries surged in Q2, beating most analysts' expectations. The company's Trey FCEV, which is virtually the only purpose-built hydrogen tractor in the North American market right now, sold 72 times to wholesalers in the second quarter, beating the company's own estimations of 50 to 60 trucks. This is coming from 40 such deliveries in the first quarter and full-year delivery estimations of anywhere from 300 to 350 units. This certainly on the surface may not seem like a big number, but it's important to keep in mind that Class 8 sales account for a very small percentage of total automotive as well as commercial and industrial sales in the country. What's more is that Class 8 sales have been declining for nine consecutive months so far in 2024, with a year-over-year -year decline of 13% in just the month of April. Last year in December, we ended with just around 50,000 units of Class 8 inventory. But in just four months, that number grew by 10,000 to 60K. Freightliner and Western Star, which are owned by Daimler Truck, saw their sales decline by 24% in the month of April to 8,000 units. And these are not isolated results. UPS just today announced earnings way below analyst estimations, particularly for guidance, with their shipping volume falling year over year, resulting in an almost 30% decline in their stock price. Weak freight demand and soft pricing in the shipping sector particularly are causing what some call a global freight recession. And this is exactly why Class A demand, as well as industrial demand for trucks, is slow but steady. And when you have a novel and brand new technology like hydrogen or even battery electric coming to that specific industry during such a tumultuous time, you know this is a very hard task to accomplish. But like they say in the industry, nothing is impossible to solve. All it requires is grit and persistence. And right now, we're starting to see some of the rewards of that from Nikola's recent progress. Not only are dealers seeing more steady demand for these electric tractors, but OEMs and corporations are going firsthand in partnering with these manufacturers to get these trucks on the road. Believe it or not, as much as we hate seeing new technologies on the road, there are companies that care about ESG and reducing their emissions. And particularly for the Class 8 space, an electric and hydrogen powertrain provides unmatched benefits from diesel and natural gas ones where you have zero vibrations, much cleaner emissions, low noise, as well as a much easier driving experience. And well, one of the important parts of that experience is being able to refuel these vehicles anywhere you want at a price that is competitive with markets like diesel and natural gas. And that is exactly where hydrogen hubs start to make a lot more sense. You see folks, the problem with hydrogen is not technology or application. There is clearly a product market fit and there is clearly pent up demand for this technology. 
The issue right now, just like every technology at the beginning, is a lack of skill and a lack of investment in backend infrastructure. Don't get me wrong, hydrogen is important, and it is already produced in significant quantities every year for the past 50 years, and has proven to be an extremely safe gas for making fertilizers, processing glass, and even making metal from iron ore. However, because demand for hydrogen comes mostly from the oil and gas industry, and the gas itself is only produced using methane reformation, which produces carbon dioxide, it's important to focus on the projects that can produce the same hydrogen at the same price and quantity, but with renewable energy. And that is where you need a coalition of projects that match supply and demand with the right kind of vetted customers and suppliers in the form of organizations. Because at the end of the day, to finance any project, investors need to understand that the full supply chain is built out and that there are actual government incentives behind it, which is exactly what California's hydrogen hub is intending to do. Nikola's early stage hydrogen refueling stations, for example, scattered across Arizona and Northern and Southern California, have already seen more than 2,000 fueling events over the course of their short lifespan. Having started just in December of last year, more than 33 metric tons has been dispersed from the Ontario, California station, for example, which is typically around 42 kilograms per fill. That is equivalent to a range of 300 to 350 miles for a fuel cell class A tractor, a pretty significant number at a time when the industry is still very small. And this same refueling technology can be easily integrated into the ecosystem and supply chain of such a hydrogen hub for which California has been the very first to receive funding for. Not only will these hubs be a web of shared physical structures for hydrogen suppliers and users, but they're going to be something much more intangible as well, a platform for information that will align common infrastructure requirements, shape basic terms, create resource exchanges, and optimize efficiencies to accelerate the clean hydrogen industry. By the way, we not only need for electric vehicles, but also hydrogen storage, long duration renewable energy capture, and even transportation like methanol, shipping, and aviation. Think about it for a second. Steel, fertilizers, shipping, aviation, and potentially other industries all have and need to use hydrogen. And particularly, they wanna use clean hydrogen to reduce their carbon expenditures. However, they don't buy that hydrogen from all the same places. Delta Airlines doesn't buy the jet fuel they use from the same place that a fertilizer manufacturer might buy their natural gas for ammonia. But they do share a common goal of decarbonization. And because these sectors are naturally using that same supply chain, we need a resource to connect them. And that is what a regional hydrogen hub is going to do. This certainly isn't going to be an easy task, and emissions aren't going to be reduced immediately. Blue hydrogen produced from methane and carbon capture is going to have to play a role in bringing down the overall cost of green hydrogen. But rest ensured that there is a lot of progress happening, and that this industry could grow much faster than many people are currently expecting, especially in the midst of the electrification revolution. There are significant energy growth factors in play and we're going to need to be able to support all of them where hydrogen can help play a key role. But you folks, that is just my take on the situation, so let me know your thoughts on the hydrogen hub down in the comment section below. Take care.